Why are stable coins having such a moment right now? I mean, is it is it because Bitcoin has been range bound and people are just kind of parking their funds in stable coins while they wait and see what's happening? What I think it's because of adoption. So going back to my statistics, so the peak last peak was back in March 2022. So the total market, like I, we tracked the top 10 uh, stablecoin market cap. In total, it was about $164 billion in March 2022. It was a painful 19 months period to go down from 164 to 120. But since then, it came all the way back up to $169 billion at the end of September, right? That process only took 11 months. Painful 19 months, very fast 11 months, but not many people talk about that. I felt like one thing is stable coin, um, the adoption, um, all this ETF coming to the market, and people are getting more comfortable to do on RAM and trust stable coin. So uh, when you look at the trend, the top 10, two stable coins stand out. The first one is first digital USD. The second one is PayPal USD. So what that tells me is, other than trading, I'm seeing more and more payment or remittance use cases coming into this space. So that's why I am pretty kind of like, not bullish, but more positive compared to 12 months ago, because I see new money coming in, not just for trading, but also for some other use cases. Yeah, but m most of it is USDT and it's on Tron. So that's all Asian, you know, dollar uh, deposits that are building up. I mean, you just, it's very clear. 18 months ago, there were almost no, you know, there's very little USDT on Tron. So the Tron, um, I don't know if anyone wants to talk about Tron. <laughs> I mean, well, it's part, you can talk about Asian that. gambling, about that. I guess, is no, what's Part of I it mean, also what is, is, it? is, you know, uh, you're seeing the, the payment side of it. So there is an element of, of Tron that's Africa. And so, you know, one of the narratives inside of the, the crypto ecosystem is banking in the unbanked. And so you're starting to see, maybe you're starting to see some of that come to fruition, which I think the payments area is really interesting. The fact that the previous panel and, and many of the conversations we've had are talking about settlements, you know, T plus one, T plus three. I mean, we settle T plus one for our clients, but it's, it's a courtesy for those that can't settle atomically your same day, and it's mostly TradFi. So you see the, the real world use cases, and that's, and that's what, what really becomes interesting. It no longer, it's been de-risked with the ETPs and with, with some of the things that have, happen, that have happened in the last 12 to 18 months, but you're, you're seeing it starting to become, you know, have a utility that unlocks the power of what we really think it is. And so that is the evolution of, you know, finance. What do you guys, I mean, it really is having a moment, not just because of that climbing market cap, but it seems like in the last few weeks, there's an announcement from everybody about how they're launching a stable coin. Revolut in Europe is launching a stable coin. I think Paxos is launching a new payments platform for stable coins. Um, you know, state of Wyoming is launching a stable coin. Uh, why is everybody launching a stable coin? Well, look, I mean, it, it, it makes sense. Most of the stable coins are all dollar denominated. So why should there be 99% a dollar and no euro stable coin or yen stable coin or whatever it is? So I think, you know, it'll eventually end up maybe five to 10 years from now mir mirroring, mirroring the, uh, the traditional currency markets. And if you think about it, they really, I traded currencies for, and other things for 25 years. They really are only 15 or 20 or so currencies, major currencies to trade. I suspect at some point, all currencies will be on some sort of blockchain and be tradable and fungible. Yeah. Um, the it's, other, it's so good. I was just gonna say, the other thing to keep in mind is you're hearing announcements now, but these things take, you know, time. And so think about the, the interest rate backdrop that we were operating against. And let's be honest, having your own stable coin with significant float is a great business model, right? You get, to, you get to clip the coupon on that or share that coupon, but it's a great business. And so you're hearing about these things now because they take time to build, but it's a good business. And there are use cases and people are starting to see that, that maturation and, and comfortable, you know, people are comfortable holding them, you know, traditional companies. And so it makes a lot of sense that 
people want to get in on that game. I was going to say the same exact thing, that it's a great business to be in if you can you know, pay zero yield and earn four and a quarter uh, invested. Um, and one thought I have had recently is how many do you need, right? How many dollar-based or euro-based stable coins? And I don't know what the answer is there, right? It's so I think a lot of companies are looking at the space. They're looking at future consumers who are on chain. They want to have some relationship or touch point with them. So, so why not enter the space and, and try, to, try, try to grow stable coin?